Well, God bless you and keep you in Jesus' name because he is worthy to be praised. You know, there's no other name given upon the heaven by what man can be saved, but by the name of Jesus. That means that you can't be saved in the name of Buddha. You can't be saved in the name of Allah. You can't be saved in the name of your, your daddy or your bishop or your best friend or your pal or your pastor or your, or your wife or your husband or your children. You can only be saved in the name of of Jesus. You can't pray um, to God in the name of your pastor. You can't pray to God in the name of your archbishop, your YouTube buddy, your best friend, your pa No, you can only pray in the name of Jesus. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And I want to talk about something today that really, really, really um, is an issue. And it's the issue of forgiveness. We as Christians, we know we're not supposed to hold grudges or have unforgiveness in our heart, no matter what the situation may be. And for some of us, that is a tall task. Yes, it is. You'll be surprised how many pastors, bishops, or whatever good title they have are right now working in unforgiveness. Um, you'll be surprised how many of them right now they um, are still upset because some man left their church and took some members with him. Uh, uh, mad because um, of a divorce or uh, mad at the congregation. Uh, you'll be shocked and surprised. How many uh, pastors right now are working and operating in unforgiveness, holding grudges? Hallelujah. The Bible says something really interesting. How can a man say he loves God whom he has not seen and yet hate of his brother whom he sees every day? Forgiveness is a tall task because it's a, I'm not talking about good preaching. I'm not talking about good teaching. How you forgiven your brother and sister in Christ? How you forgiven them? Um, Jesus says somebody interesting when he was dying on the cross. As Jesus is dying on the cross, as people don't blindfolded him and, and smacked him and, and put a crown of thorns on his head and spit on him and, and hit him with the, the fist and slapped him in different things. And yet, and folks uh, mocking him as he's dying on the cross, he says, Father, forgive them. What? For they know not what they do. Shama koba dia masi. Um, uh, Stephen, Stephen, the deacon Stephen, when he was being stoned to death, he said, Father, lay not this sin to their charge. Hallelujah. There are some people, they have not crucified us. They haven't stoned us to death. They may have talked about us. They may have divorced us. They may have cheated on us. They may have took us to court. They may have done different things that we, in our lifetime, like, my God, I mean, woof. And yet, we have to say, Father, forgive them. Even if they know what they're doing, Father, forgive them. Because every morning when we wake up, God blesses us with new mercy. He forgives us every day. He forgives us uh, at the cross. Even if you're trying to say you're sinning accidentally, my accident, accidental sinners, you got a good accident policy on you. Um... His father, the father in the name of Jesus, still has to say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Okay, I'll show you something real quick in the Word of God, in the book of Matthew's Gospel, chapter 18, and around verse 15. Can I show you something real quick? It says, if your brother sins against you, go tell him his fault between you and him alone. Don't preach about him on, over the pulpit. Don't clown him in front of everybody. No, if your brother uh, sins against you, Go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. Then you can tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen, tell it, and, and, and let him be like a Gentile or a tax collector. Truly I say to you, Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on, on earth about anything they ask, 
it will be done for them by my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am among in the midst of them. That's a very familiar passage of scripture. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, there will I be in the midst of them. But he's talking about forgiveness. Two or three can't be gathered together in his name and unforgiveness. Two or three can't be gathered together in his name and they and they don't have they, they don't have forgiveness in their heart. So he's saying, if you don't have forgiveness in your heart, and and he he says, well, that person is bound. Shama. And whatsoever you bound on earth shall be bound in heaven. Forgiveness, unforgiveness bounds up your prayers. That's what you speak of. It binds up your prayers. It's hard to get a prayer through. It's impossible, nearly impossible. Hard to get a prayer through when you walk around in unforgiveness. Right now, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I try to forgive folks daily. Folks who I've had problems with, issues with, folks close to me that I, I believe that had done me wrong. Um, I ask, Lord, help me forgive these people daily. Lord, help them forgive me daily. Shaka, Tokolaba. So right now, the, the when he when he says that I keep in the Lord's not the Lord's prayer, but the disciples' prayer when he was speaking to the disciples, and they said, Lord, teach us to pray. And, and the Lord said, Well, when you pray, say this, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from me. He said, give, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Some translators say, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who are trespassing against us. You see, we're, 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 it goes hand in hand. Since God is going to forgive us of our trespasses, then we need to forgive others who have trespassed against us. Father, right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Any unforgiveness in my heart, in my brother's heart, in my, uh, my whoever. We ask right now in the name of Jesus that you wipe it away. Let us forgive each other daily, just as you, you forgive us daily. Let us forgive daily. That way we won't be bringing up the past. We won't be bringing up what they did in the, in the back in the day and in, in the past. And in 1946, you did this. In 67, I, I could have swore I seen you do this. And in 89, you was behind. In 99, you, you weren't mine. And, and all that mess. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, let us forgive. Forgiveness. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Because we know that unforgiveness hinders our prayers. So right now, and there's a lot of prayers been answered this year. And we see why God has been answering prayer for us. It's because in previous years, we were walking in unforgiveness. <laughs> this, I, I said at the beginning of the year, this is the year for answered prayer. There's only three months left in this year, October, November. Three months left in this year. Three is resurrection. And I pray that you see what miraculous things happen in these next three months. But unforgiveness can hinder that. And I said this year that this is the year for answered prayer. And we've been praying for people. And we've seen, we've seen God answer prayer. We've seen God open up doors. We've seen God do a miraculous things. And right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we've just seen God do it seemingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works within us. And it's because we've been walking in forgiveness. Previous years when we pray, we have not seen God move like this. You know why? Because we were walking in unforgiveness. But now, because we are that have made a choice to forgive, now we're seeing prayer answered like never before. Let me show you something else in Jesus' name. In the same Matthew chapter 18 and around verse 21, it says this, Then Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how often would my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times. This is Peter. Peter is saying, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? What, to seven times? And watch what Jesus said. Jesus said to him, I didn't, I, I did not say to you seven times, but seventy times seven. Oof. 
490 times. You know what Jesus is saying to them? There's no limit on it. There's no limit on it. There's no limit on forgiveness. Shato Kolaba. Because you know, in one day, your brother's not going to come 490 times and do something. There's no limit on it. <laughs> How often? Not to seven times. You don't have to count it off. But it's unlimited. That's how often he shall sin against you and you forgive him. See, this is something that's not shouted about. This is something I talk about. Big name preachers don't talk about this. Folks don't really talk about this. Forgiveness. Small time preachers don't talk about this. Big time preachers don't really talk about this. You got to forgive. Shama. Can I tell you something else? Therefore, the kingdom of heaven may be a, a, a compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. Here we go. This is how the kingdom of heaven is like. If you want to know how, what the kingdom of heaven is like, listen to this parable. Oftentimes, when people try to tell us what the kingdom of heaven is like, they talk about what a big Cadillac, a big old building, some nice pews. It no. Nah. They ain't what the kingdom of heaven is like. Here's what the kingdom of heaven is like. <laughs> Listen to what the Jesus said about it. My God. When he began to settle one who was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents, and since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold with his wife and children and all that had until payment be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, have patience with me, and I will pay you everything here's a servant that came to his lord owed him ten thousand he couldn't pay anything and so what's going to happen is they're getting ready to sell the man his wife his children anything and the payment be made the man begged his lord hey i can't pay this have mercy on me watch what happened and out of pity for him the master of that that servant released him and forgave him the debt he forgave him everything man go your way man you don't owe me no more is is it all? It wouldn't it be awesome if the bank did that, or the, or the house car, house note, or the cardinal did that right now. You get a, car, a call from the cardinal folks and say, "Hey, don't even worry about the rest of this debt, man. Don't even worry about it. You ain't gotta pay it. Don't worry about the rest of this card note, this house note. We ain't gotta pay it. You know the you know what the illustration is. You know what the the revelation is. Jesus Christ has paid it all on the cross. So don't worry about that that sin you got, that adultery, that fornication, all that stuff you don't did. Uh, that backbiting, that hatred, that, that stealing, you know, all that stuff, that lying, you know, don't worry about it. I have forgiven you all of the debt, that sin debt, Jesus Christ, I'm paid it all. That's the skill of straight really, because you can pay it back. Your blood can pay it back. Your thinking you living the, the your best life, or your, your, the, the best life of anybody, your, you think you living all holy and righteous, don't worry about it, though. Live that way, no doubt, but you can't, they ain't paying the Lord back. You can't pay it back. <laughs> that debt that you owe, you can't get, you can't pay it back. So watch what happened. And out of pity for him, the master of the servant released him, forgave him the debt. But when the same servant went out, the same one that had been forgiven a ten thousand dollars, the same one that had been forgiven a one meal, the same one that had sinned and messed up and committed a, a fornication, or maybe a, a, a committed a lewd acts, or maybe a stole, or maybe did a, the same one, that same man. Went out. That's what happened now. And he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. Only a hundred dollars. And seizing him, he began to choke him, saying, pay me what you owe. Whoa. That same man that had been forgiven of 10000 found a man that owed him a hundred dollars and started choking him on the neck. Talking about, pay me what you owe me. That's what we've been doing. That's why our prayers have been hindered for years. Because the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, God of glory, has forgiven us of all sin. And yet we have found somebody in the street. And we have taken them to the courts. We have choking them out. We're trying to choke out the life out of them. We choke their praise out. We don't choke out their ministry. Choke out the anointing. We're trying to choke out everything. We, we don't found them and decided that they owe us this hundred and they're going to pay us. 
And yet the Lord don't forgive us of all that sin and death. And yet we, get, we are finding people daily that owe us and we're choking them. And, it, and then while we're choking them, what we're doing is we're choking out our prayer life. We can't get a prayer through. Because God ain't hearing and answering prayer for somebody got unforgiveness in their heart. You have to forgive. Unforgiveness has to be um, squeezed out of you. Pressed out of you. It has to be humbled out of you. The lives and the circumstances of life will get that unforgiveness out of you. The Lord forgave you of all that stuff. You ought to forgive somebody else. Watch what happened here. He began to choke him and saying, pay me what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. He refused and went and put him in prison until he should pay the debt. Look at that. He don't put the man in prison. This same man owed his master 10000 This other man only owed him, watch this now, and his master forgave him of that 10000 And that same man that was forgiven went out and choked somebody out and put the man in prison for $100. The Lord done forgave you of all your sins, and yet you're holding over somebody's head because they spoke up against you behind your back. They made a brung back your car without gas. I know it may be hard to forgive because they walked off with your husband. Slept with your wife. Stole from you. Sat on your ministry. Pastors, there's some pastors right now that won't forgive another pastor because that pastor used to go to their church and he don't go to where He decided to start his own church. And now you like hateful and spiteful and and there's some pastors right now that the man will start his own church and, and you're mad so you kept talking against the church to it to the church closed its doors now you're happy you're saying see the lord has answered my prayer to stop this man's church unforgiveness unforgiveness can i show you something else <laughs> He refused and went and put him in prison till he should pay the debt. And when his fellow servants saw that had taken place, they were greatly distressed. And they went and reported to their master all that had taken place. Look at that, the Holy Spirit don't told on you. And then his master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, you wicked servant, I forgave you all the debt because you pleaded with me. And you shouldn't. And should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you. That was the Lord saying to us. I forgave you for all that stuff. I died for all your sins on that cross. And yet here is your fellow servant out here on this earth. And you won't forgive them. Wow. Lord, help us to forgive. Help us to forgive. And help us to forgive daily. As folks that have done wrong to us in our past, help us to forgive them daily. Right now, Kobasha, in the name of Jesus. And watch this. Forgiveness means what it means. Ain't, ain't no sense of trying to get technical about it. I'm forgiven, but I ain't hanging out. Yeah. Forgiveness means what it means. I, I ain't, we ain't got to quote Greek. We ain't got to quote Hebrew. We ain't got to speak in the tongues. We ain't, forgiveness means what it means. Forgive. They talked about you, for, for, but forgive. They went behind your back, forgive. They stole, forgive. They slept with your husband, forgive. They slept with your wife, forgive. They they they, they had a baby, forgive. Uh, there's some people, there's some preachers, there's some church, or a church folks walking around right now won't forgive other church folks because they don't, oh, girl, he, she don't have a baby out of wedlock. Like, girl, she don't divorce her husband. Girl, she don't did this. And they won't forgive. God don't forgive them. You know, for some reason, the church folks won't forgive them. The church won't, won't let it die down. And these very same people, oftentimes, as they speak and not forgive somebody else, they got stuff going on, but they want forgiveness, though, for though. There's people right now walking around that have laughed and talked about a, a minister who started his own building and building closed and fell. And they have done the same thing that that, that other preacher have done and watched their building closed down and watched themselves not be able to pass it somewhere. And yet still won't forget. 
the very same thing that you that the other man was caught up in you was caught up in but yet your stuff is it was pure huh out of a pure heart the other man's i guess was forgive god has a way of humbling you it's time to forgive it's time because your prayers are hindered let me tell you what happened here he says and they were greatly distressed and went and reported to to their master all that had taken place then his master could summon him and said to him you wicked servant i forgave you of all that debt because you plead with me and should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as i had mercy on you and the anger of his master delivered him to the jailers until he said pay all to his debt so also my heavenly father would, would do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart not from your mouth we can't forgive people from our mouths oh i forgive you we can't forgive people from our mouths we have to forgive them from our heart you keep in your mind you think i'm gonna get back in your mind thinking well i'm just gonna you know i'm gonna be successful and I, that's where I get, no, no, forgive. Your competition is not another man or a woman in Christ. We're here to serve the Lord. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, now, I'm praying for everyone under the sound of my voice that will see this, this broadcast. And I'm praying, Father God, that they will forgive and learn how to forgive their fellow servants. I'm praying for pastors who can't forgive their parishioners. I'm praying for pastors who can't forgive other pastors. I'm praying right now for church folks who won't forgive really folks. They won't forgive their mother, their, their father. They, oh, my dad should have been there more, so I can't forgive my mother. Shouldn't have sold me. I shouldn't have did. Whatever happened to us in life, Father God, we know it was terrible. We know it was hard. We know it was messed up. But through it all, Father God, help us to forgive. Because if we don't forgive, we know our prayers are hindered. Father, right now, we, we, we don't forgive. We know we're bound in heaven and we're bound on earth. But if we forgive, then the heavens are open and we shall be blessed on earth. Right now, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, thank you for the, the, the forgiveness that you have uh, and, and the things and the humbling you've shown me in the last five, six years. But keep doing it every day. Help me to uh, continue to forgive from the heart. Because I know if since I can forgive my past, then I forgive those who are in my present and forgive those in the future. And that right now, Father God, our, our prayers will never be hindered again. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. God bless you. Keep you.